Box 13, with the star of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Dear Mr. Box 13, care of newspaper Star Times, I am Nick Nerekios. For 20 years, I own a restaurant, and there is no trouble, and that is good. Now, I got trouble, and that is bad. One day, I look through paper, I see box 13, that you go any place, do anything you want adventure. All right, Mr. Box 13, you come to Nick's place, 2129 10th Street. You have no trouble finding it because it is only Nick's place. place in the neighborhood. Maybe you help Nick? Yes? <laughs> Maybe I help Nick, sure. At first I was laughing, and later I was laughing. But I was laughing with tears in my eyes. Now, back to Box 13 and Dan Holliday's newest adventure, Tempest in a Casserole. Nick, what's his last name, Mr. Holliday? Narakius. Oh. Doesn't seem like anything interesting could come of it, does it, Susie? Well, I think you ought to go and see him. Hmm? Why? I've had better letters than this, and you've thrown cold water on him. His place is on 10th Street. Uh, keep going, Susie. What's your point? Well, I, I thought you could do me a favor at the same time. Uh-huh. What? Look. What's that? I ordered an earthenware pot from Caldwell's department store on 10th Street. And look what they sent me. <laughs> it's cute. A little merry-go-round. A toy. I know. But, but, but it isn't what I asked for. What did you ask for? I told him to send me a carousel. Well, you got it. I didn't. I got this. If you ordered a carousel, you... You... <laughs> I do not think this is very funny. <laughs> Susie, did you by any chance mean a casserole? Uh, oh, uh, I guess I did. The customer at Caldwell's is always right. You ordered a carousel, and a carousel you got. Will you take it back for me, please? No, sure. And even if Nick doesn't have anything interesting, I can do you a favor. So long, Susie. A half hour later, I was in Nick's place on 10th Street. A clean, neat restaurant that seemed to be doing a wonderful business. Every table was filled and the counter was loaded and crowded with people. I asked for Nick and a waitress guided me to his office in the rear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I can do you something, sir. Well, the question is, what can I do for you? Uh, what are you selling? My services. Free. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I do not understand. <laughs> Mr. Thirteen, Mr. Thirteen, I am so glad. To, please, you, you sit down, please. Eh? Oh, thanks. I have a name as well as a number, Nick. It's Dan, Dan Holliday. Oh, good, Mr. Dan. My name, Alexander Nerekios. Alexander? But I thought... Oh, sure, sure. My name, Alexander, but when I first come to this country, everybody called me Nick. One name, she's good like any other. Uh, but that is not here or any place, yes? Yes, I suppose not. Uh, Mr. Den, you see my restaurant, you come in, yes? Yes, and you're doing a roaring business, Nick. Uh, like Shakespeare says, it's a rob. What do you mean? Oh, Mr. Den, you, you look here, I open the door. It's still crowded out there. Uh, yes, but each one have coffee, just coffee. They sit and read newspapers, books, anything, and they drink one cup of coffee. Nothing else? Nothing. Oh, I see. And how long do they stay? All day long. I am losing money, fist over hands. Any enemies who might want that? I? Enemies? No, no, I have no enemies, Mr. Dan. I like everybody, everybody like me. You ask all around. Everybody say, Nick Nerekios, good man. Has anyone else ever wanted this spot? Oh, sure, sure. Lots of times people come, they want to sublease from me. I, I say no. Has that happened recently? Uh, sure, only two days ago. I think that's it, Nick. 
This is a good spot in between Caldwell's department store and a bank. Uh, you probably did a lot of business before the coffee drinkers moved in on you. Uh, yes, but now, my regular customer, they come past at noontime, they look in, they see all the business, they in a hurry, so they go someplace else. Oh, Mr. Ben, you help Nick, yes? Sure. I'll tell you what, Nick. You put a sign on each table and on the counter. Mm -hmm. One that reads, minimum charge, 50 cents. <laughs> oh, that is wonderful. <laughs> That's magnificent, Mr. Ben. Yes, sure, sure. I do that. Yeah. Okay. Now I'll be running along. Hey, look, um, anytime you want, you come to Nick's place, you bring friends, all your friends. <laughs> Nick cook personally for you. Anything you want. You do that, yes? It's a deal. Uh, now you tell me something else. What's that, Nick? Why you do this? Why you put that ad in the paper? Well, I write stories, Nick, and sometimes a letter leads me to a good one. You don't take money? No. How you live? Buy my stories. When I haven't got writer's cramp. Oh. Hmm. Well, I've got to be going, Nick. Meanwhile, don't forget the signs on the tables and the counter. <laughs> So, marking that little visit off to profit and loss, I went home. Then the next day at the office... You forgot, didn't you? Huh? Forgot what, Susie? You didn't take my carousel back for a casserole. Oh, I'm sorry, Susie. I put it in the back of my car and forgot all about it. I'll do it for you, though. When, Mr. Holliday? Maybe today. All right. Hello? Please, you let me talk to Mr. Holliday. I want well, to talk to called? Mr. Dan. Please, I know hurry. I'm very done. important. Uh, wait a minute. I, I don't know who this is, Mr. Holliday. Yeah, I'll take it. Hello? Uh, Mr. Dan, Mr. Dan Holliday. I want to talk to Mr. Dan Holliday, the writer. Well, this very is Dan. Oh. Oh, Nick? Yes, Nick. Oh, Mr. Dan, I am in trouble once more again. What's the matter? My idea didn't it work? Oh, sure, sure, fine. Work fine. Then what's the matter? My credit, it is ruined. Your credit? Now, go slowly, Nick, and tell me all about it. Four years I buy on credit, the same as big business. All the time I pay my bills sharp on the dash. Now, all of a sudden, no credit. Mm-hmm. Sounds like someone fixed that for you. What do I do now? No wholesaler send Nick food he need for business. I cannot open my restaurant. I am ruined. I am no, ruined. no, no. Calm down a minute and listen to me. I listen. Did you make money last month? Always I make money. Well, have you got a bank account? Four of them. All right, then. Have one of your banks call the wholesalers with whom you do business. Just reestablish your credit. That's all. Uh, that, that is all I do, Mr. Dan? Mm-hmm. That's all. What a wonderful man, uh, uh, Mr. Dan. Yes? You are not right, uh... Uh, No? No, you are a genius. <laughs> Goodbye. Susie, I am now a genius. Good, but is there a story in it? Oh, you slave driver. What a wonderful guy. Who, Nick? Why didn't you go down there then? But you heard me handle it over the phone. My casserole, Mr. Holliday. Oh, all right, later. Well, I'm glad we had that thing put in. It keeps me awake. I'll get it, Susie. Uh, okay. Hello. Mr. Ben? Yeah, Nick, you again? Hey, Mr. Ben, the whole world is terrible. Now what's the matter? Uh, nothing like has happened since Adam and Eve. The world is upside down, topsy-topsy. Hold it a minute, Nick. You better start over again. Oh, I, I will take back the drinkers of coffee. I will pay them to come back, but this is too much. Please, please, you come to me. Help me, Mr. Dan. I, you all come... right, Nick, all right. I'll be there in a half hour. I hurried down to Nick's place, and before I could drive up in front, I knew something was wrong. The street was crowded with trucks and the drivers. The place was a bedlam. Horns tooting, drivers yelling at each other to get out of the way, and right in the center of it all, Nick. His hair was standing on end, his face was as white as a sheet, and his arms were flying around like a lunatic windmill. I parked in an alley a half a block away and walked toward Nick. Oh, no, no, these are not mine. I did not order ten radios and jig boxes. Now, look, you're Nick Nero. Are you Nick? I am Nick. I wish I was not Nick. Hey, Nick, what's this all about? Oh, Mr. Dan, Mr. Dan, my friend. Look what has happened to Nick. Hey, mister, you know this guy, this Nick? Yes, I do. 
What is all this, driver? Yeah, just look at this bill here. It says deliver ten radios and three jukeboxes to Nick's place. Now the guy says he don't own no, them. No, I don't, I don't, Mr. Day. Hey, pull that hack of yours out of the way. I gotta get in there. Keep your ears in, wise guy. I'm hey, in for Oh, Mr. Day. My restaurant is filled with things I do not order. Look, all up the street, down the street. Trucks. Yeah, trucks. I see them, Nick. Two pianos, five refrigerators, 19 beds. My customers are all gone. They are scared of the elephant. Elephant? Oh, what do you mean? Somebody send Nick an elephant. <laughs> oh, Mr. Ben, please, about an elephant is nothing funny. Okay, Nick, you go back into your restaurant. I'll take care of this for you. Oh, you do this, Mr. Ben. Nick is grateful. Yeah, sure. What would but... I do with an elephant? Well, I did what I could. I convinced the truck drivers with the help of five cops that a mistake had been made. It took over an hour, but at last the tangle was unsnarled. Radios, refrigerators, jukeboxes, razor blades, pianos, beds, whatnots, and the elephant. Well, they were all sent back where they'd come from. Then I went in to see Nick. Oh, Mr. Ben, Nick does not know what to say. Nick is spokeless. Sit down, Nick. Oh, sure. You want some coffee? Uh, not right now, thanks. Mm. Look, Nick, you said someone had asked you to sublet your restaurant. What reason was given? They say Nick does not know how to run a restaurant. They say they make a gold mine. Yet you've been making a comfortable living. Oh, in America, I am very happy. I, I come here a long time ago now. Mm -hmm. All right, Nick, here's what you do. You sit tight. Sit tight? Stay right where you are. Don't sublet to anyone. Understand? Oh, I never give up my place. Never. That's the ticket. Whoever's doing this to you will have to give up sometime. Mm -hmm. And if anything else happens, you let me know, Oh, huh? sure, sure. I'll call my good friend, Mr. Den. Swell. Uh, why you think they do this to me, Mr. Den? I don't know, Nick. But it'll be interesting to find out. I went back home, and the more I thought about Nick and the trouble he was having, the more curious I got. Why should anyone want a restaurant badly enough to go to all that trouble? Why? I was still wondering when... Hello? Mr. Dan? Is, is this Mr. Dan? Yes, who is this? Uh, I am Mrs. Nick Narakios. Mrs. Narakios? Yes. Mr. Dan, I... Mrs. Narakios, what's the matter? It's about Nick, my poor Nick. What about him? He wants you to come to him. Where? You come, please. Please come, please. Right away. What's the address? 789 Borden Street. Please, you hurry, please. Something terrible has happened to my Nick. And now, back to Tempest in a Casserole. Another Box 13 adventure with Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. I hurried to Nick's home. Whatever had happened to him was enough to make his wife almost hysterical. She met me at the door, her face stained with tears. She led me through the clean little flat and... Nick, Nick, here is Mr. Dan. Oh, my friend. Nick, what happened? Who did this to you? Look what they do to my Nick. His poor eyes, his nose... My neck. Uh, Gina, you go out of room for a minute, yes? I want to talk to Mr. Dan. Make some coffee, eh? All right, Nick. All right. I make you some coffee. Nick, how did this happen? Tonight I leave my restaurant. Always I take the shortcut through the alley back of my place. I walk for a little bit and somebody hit me. Did you see who it was? No, I... Oh. Did you go to the police? Oh, no, no, no. I come home. I tell my wife to call you, Mr. Dan. I... But you should have gone to the police. Oh, but I am scared, Mr. Dan. I, I read in paper that men who do this will also maybe hurt my wife. I do not want that, Mr. Dan. I do not want that. Mm. Nick, I want you to sublet your place. Oh, no, no, I do not do that. I will send my wife away where she will be safe, but no. Nick, stay here, like you say, sit tight. I do not give up. You want me to help you, don't you? Oh, sure. And listen to me and do as I say. Sublet your restaurant. Sublet it and we'll see what happens. Oh. 
After I left Nick, I went to see Lieutenant Kling. He listened to what I had to tell him and... But Dan, he should have come to the police. He was scared, Kling. Besides, what could he prove? The men who beat him up were hired by the person or, or persons who want Nick's place. Why? There's a bank next door, Kling. I know that, but you're not thinking those guys will drill through the walls in that restaurant to get to the bank. It's been done before. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. So you told Nick to go ahead and sublet. That's right. Look, Kling, here's the way I figured. They want Nick's place badly enough to commit mayhem. They counted on his being scared enough to keep him away from the police. But what they didn't know was that Nick had written to me asking me to help. So? What's your idea? Let them have the place. Let them do what they want, but watch that bank. Well, Nick sublet his place to the men who had been after it, and Kling and the police watched the bank. Special alarms were set in the walls. Night and day, the restaurant was watched. And what happened? Hmm. Well, exactly what happened to simple Simon's fish hook in the pail of water. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. One day, after a couple of weeks of this game of watch and wait, I, I was in my office. Mr. Holliday. Hmm? What, Susie? Did you ever look in the back seat of your car? Back seat of my car? Why? Who's there? Not who. What? Well, what's this? Twenty questions? M my carousel is still in the back seat of your car. I it's been there for weeks now. Oh, I'm sorry, Susie. I'm sorry. I... I hope I haven't held up your cooking. If you'll give it to me, Mr. Holliday, I'll take it back and exchange it. I, I wouldn't want to put you to all that trouble. <laughs> no, Susie, don't be cross. I'll take it back today. I'm going to next place anyway. Promise? Honest engine and stuff. Fine. Now I can make baked noodles sometime. Good enough. I'll go right now. Oh, hello, Why, Lieutenant. Why, hello, if it isn't Lieutenant Kling. Come on in. This isn't a social call. Look, Holiday, the department's pulling the men off the bank and the restaurant today. But why? Why? Because they needed someplace else. For two weeks we played find the gimmick because you had an idea. Now we're very tired. But that's what those men might be waiting for. Yeah, look, if they're going to make the pitch, they'd have made it. But they didn't. There's no sign they won't. Okay, okay. So we know who they are in case they do. They wouldn't get ten feet before we'd have them. Oh, Dan, we can't play anymore. Sorry. I... Okay. But I'm sure they're playing some kind of a fast game. Then you get in it. So long. Uh, maybe Kling was right. But then again, maybe I was right. I hadn't been in the restaurant since the last time with Nick. I wanted to keep out of the way in case I'd been spotted then. So I thought I'd drop in before going to the department store. A waiter came up to me. Yeah? What'll it be, mister? Uh, where's your menu? We ain't got any. No menus? Our customers can't read. Hmm. It's a funny way to run a restaurant. Okay, it's funny. So laugh. Uh, well, what have you got to eat? Hamburgers. And? Onions. Nothing else? Our customers ain't that hungry. Uh, okay, bring me a hamburger. No onions. And a cup of coffee. Take a while. If you don't want to wait, leave. This was a great restaurant. Not like when Nick had it. I was the only customer, and from the waiter's attitude, the lack of business was understandable. What was going on? As I sat there, I heard a sound that puzzled me. I couldn't figure it. And as best as I could judge, it was coming from the kitchen right in back of me. I just couldn't place that sound. Although I knew I'd heard it before, someplace. Then the waiter came back after a 15-minute wait. Here you are, mister. How about the coffee? Be up in a minute. Oh, uh... Just a second. You put onions on this. No extra charge. But I don't want onions. This is loaded with them. Okay, okay. Don't eat it then. So I sat there and looked at the hamburger. It was fried hard. And the bread was well on its way to being toast by reason of age. And the waiter? Well, if he had ever waited tables before, I'd eat the hamburger. Which I didn't. I never did get the coffee, but waiting for it gave me the chance to look around and think. That sound puzzled me. But I couldn't figure it any more than I could get the reason for the whole setup. But one thing was obvious. The management didn't care if any customers came in or not. So I left. I went next door to Caldwell's department store to exchange Susie's carousel for a casserole. And at the counter... Uh, yes, sir. May I help you? Uh, yes, please. I want this exchange. Uh, do you have your slip, sir? It's with the carousel. You see, I'd like to get one of these uh, casseroles in exchange. Uh, for yourself, sir? 
Does that make any difference? Well, I thought you might have a color preference. Uh, we have them in earth brown, red, and green. Uh, green. Uh, green? Oh, yes, sir. I, uh, oh, I'm sorry. We're out of the green ones. Well, it really doesn't make any difference. Well, how about the red? That'll be fine. Uh, do you like to cook? Not particularly. Oh, many men do. Well, this is not for me. It's, oh, oh um... I, I see. Uh, let's see now. Uh, these are one ninety-five, and the exchange on the carousel is. Um, let's see now. Uh, you owe me one eighty-seven. Here you are. Out of five, thank you, and I'll have your change in just a moment. Hey, hey, that sound. I, I beg your pardon. That sound. Now I know. Know what, sir? The compressed air tube for sending slips and money to the cashier. Oh, lady, I love you. Really, sir? This is neither the time nor the place. Where's the manager? Yeah, you, you have a complaint? No, a hunch, and I'm going to play it. Where's the manager? Well, uh, the second floor office is in the rear of the building. Thank you. You change. You change, sir, and your casserole. Don't worry, I'll be back. It was a hunch, all right. But I thought it was a good one. I called Kling, told him to get to the Carwells right away and to bring a certain something with him. And later in the manager's office. But uh, I don't understand, Mr. Holliday. That makes two of us, Mr. Bardo. Holliday, what gives? Mr. Bardo, has your store shown a loss for, say, the last two weeks? Loss? Are you a stockholder? No, but has it? Well, then I hardly think... Then that... get to the point. What are you doing? You call me here and tell me to bring a tear gas bomb. I think you've slipped your hinges. Listen, let's all go down to the kitchenware department. Kitchenware? All right, any place in the store. I, I want to prove something. Well, this is highly irregular, but since you've brought in the police, I must assume you're serious. I assure you I am. Come on. Conning? Miss Conning? Uh, yes, Mr. Bardo. Oh, it's you again. Hello. Miss Conning, this gentleman... Mr. Bardo, I assure you I was courteous. I... Why, well, he told me he loved me. What? What's going on? It, it was a figure of speech. Look, Mr. Bardo. Please ask Miss Corning to do what I asked. Really, this is ridiculous. Uh, however, Miss Corning... Uh, yes, Mr. Bardo? Make out a sales slip for, uh, for... Uh... Uh, the frying pan. Here. Yes, sir. Now, here's a $10 bill. Send it along through the compressed air tube. Uh, shall I wrap the pan? No, I don't think I'll want it. Just the slip, the money, and the change tube. Go ahead, Miss Corning. Uh, yes, sir. And what about the tear gas bomb, Dan? Tear gas? Miss Corning. What about it, Dan? I will see. All right, Miss Corning, send the slip and the $10 bill through the change tube. No, wait. What now? Mr. Bardo, call the cashier and tell her to expect this carrier. If it weren't at the police, it... Uh, give me the house phone, Miss Corning. Thank you. Extension 490. Hello, Miss Roebling. This is Mr. Bardo. In just a moment, a carrier containing a sales slip for a frying pan and a $10 bill will come to you and... Uh, 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 Mr. Holliday, why am I telling her this? Just tell her to do the usual with it. Oh, very well. Miss Roebling, handle the carrier as usual. Yes, thank you. All right, now what? Send the carrier, Miss Corning. Dan, will you tell me why I'm here? I'm on a perfectly good homicide case, and you drag me here to go throw an idiotic... I think you'll see. How long will this take, Mr. Bonner? Oh, a few seconds. The store isn't crowded. Business isn't good today, not at all. Yeah, that goes for me, too. There's a carrier. Open it, Miss Corning. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, the change is here, and your receipt for the frying pan. You... you sure? Of course, look at it. <laughs> Dan, you just bought yourself a frying pan. Now you should go home and bang your head with it. Or let me... I... I don't... Get it. I, I thought I had... Oh, excuse me. That's my extension. You thought you what, Dan? Uh, hello? I, I thought I had yes. a hunch about what? that. Now, you've taken up oh, a great dear, deal yes. of our time. I, I and, and, uh... Uh, Mr. Bardo, Mr. Bardo, the cashier phone. She said she didn't get the carrier. But that's impossible. There's the slip and the change. I knew I had a hunch. Kling, let me have that tear gas bomb. No, I give up. Here. Mr. Holliday, what are you going to do? Give me one of those carriers, Miss Corning. Thanks. Now, we'll put the bomb in the carrier. So... And gimmick it so that when the carrier is opened, the tear gas bomb will do its stuff. Okay, send it along, Miss Corning. Holiday, you crazy? The cashier opens that should be... She won't get it. Go ahead, Miss Corning, send it on. Uh, Mr. Bardo, should I? Uh, uh, yes, send it. I'll warn the cashier by phone not to open it. Mark it with your checking pencil. Good. Come on, Kling, I'll buy you a hamburger. Next door. <laughs> The 
think we made it? Sure. Now, just keep an eye on the front door of the hamburger. But... Here they come. Grab him, Kling. Grab him. Hey, what's the matter? Ah, oh, the waiter with tears in his eyes. I told you there were too many onions in that hamburger. were taking money like that? That's right, Susie. They had tapped into the compressed air tubes which ran through the walls of the department store in Nick's place. Were helping themselves to some nice, easy cash. They must have made a fortune. No, not a fortune, but enough. You see, if they had grabbed every one of the carriers, it would have spoiled the game. The store would become suspicious. Oh. But they work each city for a month, and they move on to another spot. What won't they think of next? Eh, who knows? Now, excuse me. I've got a date at Nick's for dinner. Oh, Mr. Holliday. Hmm? Why'd you get a red one? Red what? Casserole. I like green. So, a- as long as you're going down that way, will you oh, exchange... Oh, good night, Susie. Next week, same time, through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd stars as Dan Holliday in Box 13. Box 13 is directed by Richard Sandville, and this week's original story was written by Robert M. Light. Original music is composed and conducted by Rudy Schrager. Part of Susie is played by Sylvia Picker and that of Lieutenant Kling by Edmund MacDonald. Production is supervised by Vern Carstensen. Box 13 is a Mayfair production from Hollywood. Watch for Alan Ladd in his latest Paramount picture.